2020, Pentecost Sunday. This is a day that Christians all around the world celebrate when the Holy Ghost came and endowed the Holy Apostles with power, with gifts, with strength, with authority to do their job. I believe that we are in a similar hour as we speak, as God is positioning us to be filled with his uh, all-powerful Holy Ghost and endow us with power. Hey, listen, I don't know what you got going on, but call your people and tell them that the reverend on the phone and I got a message for my people. Listen, I'm going to interrupt today's regularly scheduled broadcast. I was going to end my elevator series um, uh, with the top floor, but I'm going to extend it a little bit. So this is going to be an extension of elevators, but this is dedicated to what's going on in the society right now. What's going on um, in streets all over the globe, even in London, even in Germany, even in Europe. Cities are erupting. Miami, Nashville, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Dallas, and the list goes on. Cities are erupting with pain, but is there a chance for power? Hey, listen, today's message is entitled, I Am George Floyd. After today's message, you will understand that you too are George, uh, George Floyd. And so I wanna let all my people know 
that I know it's a lot of people out there trying to appear woke. There's a lot of people out there trying to appear holy. But I want to let you know that I am woke and I worship. And God has positioned me to speak to his people. And so today, I'm going to address three things. I'm going to address the issue. I'm going to address the anger. And I'm going to address the hearts of a people with a prophetic word for those who God destined to hear this message. And so today's scripture, today's scriptures can be found in Psalm chapter 94, verses 1 through 9. And this is one of my favorite translations. This is the Passion Translation. Listen to how it reads. Lord God Almighty, you are the God who takes vengeance on your enemies. It's time for you to punish evil. Let your rays of revelation light shine from your people and pierce the conscience of the wicked and punish them. It's time to arise as judge of all the earth. Arise to punish the proud with the penalty they deserve. How much longer will you sit back and watch the wicked triumph in their evil, boasting in all that is wrong? Listen to them bragging amongst themselves, big in their own eyes, all because of the crimes they've committed against your people. See how they're crushing those who love you, God, cruelly oppressing those who belong to you. Heartlessly, they murder. They murder your children. They say to themselves, the Lord God doesn't see this. Their God, the God of Jacob, he doesn't even care. But you better be, you better watch out, you ignorant fools. You better wise up. Why would you ever act like God doesn't exist? Do you really think that God can't hear their cries? God isn't hard of hearing. He'll hear all their cries and he'll see them because God isn't blind. He who made the eye has superb 2020 vision. So let me give you a brief timeline of what we've been going through as a people, as a nation. This timeline only covers uh, some of what happened in the past six years, but I could go for a hundred years and there's countless others that have gone unreported. But look, just look in the past six years, look what happened. 2014, 12 year old boy, black boy named Tamir Rice gunned down by a white police officer. 2014, Eric Gardner died from a chokehold while being held down, pleading that he can't breathe. Michael Brown Jr., an 18-year-old black man, was fatally shot by a 28-year-old white police officer in Ferguson, Missouri, and his body was left in the streets for hours. 2015, Charleston church shooting. Nine African-American people were killed. Three were injured at the Emmanuel African uh, Methodist Episcopal Church. And this white, 21-year-old white supremacist guy, Dylan Roof, he attended the Bible study that night. He sat with the people, prayed with the people before shooting them. 2015, Freddie Gray, 25-year-old man arrested by the Baltimore Police Department and roughed up so bad that his spine was broken while being transported in a police van. He fell into a coma and he died in the hospital from his injuries. Sandra Bland, 28-year-old African-American woman who was found hanging in her cell in Walla County, Texas, three days after being arrested during a simple traffic stop. 2015, Walter Scott, also in uh, North Charleston, South Carolina, following a simple traffic stop from a, a, a non-functioning brake light, he uh, was an unarmed man and was shot and killed by the police. 2016, Philando Castile, a 32-year-old African-American man, stopped while driving and fatally shot by the Minnesota police um, in front of his girlfriend and four-year-old daughter. The murder was live-streamed on Facebook. Alton Sterling, 2016, 37-year-old black man, was shot dead at close range by two white officers in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The shooting was recorded by multiple bystanders. Moving on to 2017, in August of 2017, groups of neo-Nazis and white supremacists gathered in Charlottesville, Virginia to protest the removal of a racist general uh, who had a statue named Robert E. Lee. The rally uh, began at the university and the white supremacist group violently clashed with the protesters and someone was fatally ran over by a car. 
that too was captured on camera. 2018, on September 6, 2018, a Dallas Police Department patrol officer, Amber Geiger, entered the Dallas, um, a Dallas man's apartment, both in jean, and fatally shot him for no reason. In 2019, on August 2019, a gunman walked into a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, killing 22 people and injuring dozens more. And they said it was because he wanted to target Mexican people. 2020, Ahmaud Arbery. This should be fresh on your mind. Jogging through a neighborhood when armed vigilantes chased him down and murdered him in broad daylight. The perpetrators was not arrested until months later when a video of the shooting surfaced. 2020, Brianna Taylor, a black woman, was shot dead by police who stormed her home as she slept while searching for a suspect who was already in, cust in custody. The autopsy report says that she was shot more than eight times. And last but certainly not least, what the, who this sermon is dedicated to and inspired by, George Floyd, an African-American man who was killed by a Minneapolis police officer who kept his knee on Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Two of, of those minutes, almost three minutes, uh, occurred after he was unresponsive. His death was also recorded by bystanders. And check this out. They arrested him because somebody in the deli said that he attempted to use a fake $20 bill to buy some lunch. <laughs> Listen, this is sickening. And I want you to know, man, the anger that the people feel, I'm not going to challenge it today. I'm not going to uh, challenge it, and I'm not going to channel it. This message is not against the police. This message is about the mentality and the system that created these conditions. And you want to know what? The sad part about it is that I know, I believe in my spirit that this wasn't George Floyd's first encounter with racism. Unfortunately, for black men, this is part of our reality. What if I told you that as long as America existed, true freedom has not been attained? What if I told you that the plight for black men and black women or any person of color has been painful, tragic, and full of fear? What if I told you that every year for 52 years in America since the 1968 cold-hearted assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King that there has been at least one black death that made national headlines and sparked outrage in the community? What if I told you that Dr. King at one point was shouting peace, turning the other cheek, and pushing peaceful resistance and rhetoric, but in 1966 when America had the bloody summer? where race riots burned major cities down across the country. What if I told you that in 1967, one year before he would be murdered, Dr. King gave an interview where he said, urban riots must now be recognized as a durable social phenomenon. He told the assembled crowd of mostly white doctors and academics, these riots are not insurrections. The rioters are not seeking to seize territory or to attain control of institutions. And to some, this might be a distorted form of social protest. But let us say boldly that if the violations of law by the white man in the slums over the years were calculated correctly and compared with the law breaking of a few days of riots, the hardened criminal would be the white man. These are often difficult things to say, but I have come to see more and more that it is necessary to utter the truth in order to deal with the great problems that we face in our society. I know why we are angry. The fear and uncertainty that we have to live with is ungodly. The fact that black parents have to give their kids the talk, which gives them the understanding that they don't have the same right as everybody else is unfair. I believe that if we didn't have the capabilities to film and document these modern day lynchings, the behavior would go unchallenged. But after video, after video, 
after funeral after funeral. It gets to the point where we have been more than patient. We have done the peace route. We've sang by and by. We believe that one day they will see our humanity. And yet the violence exists. Year after year, we are still being killed. And in 2020, what we are witnessing is a literal and spiritual psychotic break from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and post-traumatic slavery disorder. In 2020, black people have to live with the PTSD that has been handed to them from generation to generation. Our forefathers keep telling us to fight on, to keep the faith. But that's easy for them to say because they eventually got some victories. They got to sit in front of, in the front of the bus with the white folks. They got to get affirmative action and a few political seats. But what did we win? It's easy to keep going when you see a little change. But we get nothing. Nobody went to jail for Trayvon. Nobody went to jail for Alton Sterling. All six were acquitted for Freddie Gray. Nobody went to jail for Mike Brown. I can go on and on. The people are rebelling against a corrupt system and the same stress and strain the people who built this country have to face, the system has to face it as well. The system has to get its fair share. And the Bible says that the fathers ate sour grapes and the children's teeth were set on edge. The fathers did something and the children had to pay for it. My people, what you see in these streets is not a riot, it's a rebellion. The people are tired. The young is tired, the old is tired. White, black, red, brown, yellow, we all tired. The tapestry of this nation is multicultural. The minority is now the majority and we can't take it no more. Y'all tell us to vote. Get out and vote, vote or die, vote in November. Vote Democrat, use your right to vote. And, and, and you know what? We've been voting for a long time. We've been voting as long as we've been able to vote and we've elected several Democratic presidents and several Democrats. We even put a black family in the White House and we still have to face the brutal honesty of black lives not mattering. The scripture says in Psalms 94 verse nine, he says, God isn't hard of hearing. He'll hear all their cries. God isn't blind. God has heard the cries of his people. He has not turned a blind eye to what has been plaguing his children. God understands everything we see. He understands everything we feel. He understands everything we hear. God is in tune with the plight of his children, and he has given them the courage to stand up. The children of God must stand up and must not lie down anymore. The church is to be on the front lines, healing the brokenhearted, setting the captives free, speaking truth to power, and prophetically speaking to the times that we are facing. The volcano of racial, economic, class, and religious disparities in this nation has been bubbling for quite some time, and now it has erupted. And as a black man, I shouldn't be afraid to be in public because I might be profiled. I should be able to jog in a white neighborhood without being chased down and executed like a dog. A teenager should be able to walk to the store in his community and get a bag of Skittles and not be wrestled to the ground and shot like Trayvon Martin. And let me be candid with you. I live in a nice neighborhood. And at night, I don't like walking to check my mailbox because I don't want to be harassed by the police because I look suspicious. And I own my own home. Why does this have to be this way? And the truth is, I am George Floyd. I am a black man in America. And this nation was built on the foundation of racism and black abuse, black murder, black rape, and injustice. The truth is, what was built on a fa faulty foundation must be dismantled. The truth is, I am George Floyd. I am a black man in America because when you see me in these streets, you don't see my degrees or education. You don't see all the people I help. You don't see the anointing and call on my life. You don't see that I am important. You don't see the struggles I go through. All you see is a black man who you need to be suspicious of. I am George Floyd. I'm a black man in America. I am Emmett Till. 
I am Malcolm X. I am Martin King. I am Sandra Bland. I am Mike Brown. I am Trayvon Martin. I am Armand Albury. I am Freddie Gray. I am Eric Gardner. I am Tamir Rice. I am Walter Scott. I am Philando Castile. I am Alton Sterling. I am Sean Bell. I'm, I am Amador Diallo. I am John Crawford. I am Breonna Taylor. I am my brother's keeper. I am my brother. I am a black man in America. I am George Floyd. My God. My God. My God. My God. My people, major cities across this country are erupting into chaos. Things seem to be getting out of control. And sadly, the events of this weekend has transcended the memory of George Floyd. And it's went from being upset about a public lynching and has uh, morphed into being upset about America. And the truth is, others are using this opportunity to inflict evil, but the word says that what they meant for evil, God meant for our good. God is going to use all that is happening in America to level the playing field and usher in a new world order. And so God gave me a prophetic word for the church. He gave me a prophetic word for everybody who was destined to bear with me and listen to me up to this point. God says that this world is no longer shifting, it is tilting. When God allows us to shift, we move from one place to another. When God tilts something, he is turning it over. He is tilting it so that what was on the bottom will rise to the top. That, we, that which was upright is now going to lean. God says that there is a seismic shift that's taking place in the atmosphere right now. And I want you to understand what's going on in the spirit realm right now. There's a tilting taking place, not only in America, but in the world. We are battling viruses and violence. Things are going viral and something has broken loose. And so I want to, I want to prepare the people. Get ready. Get ready for what is on the other side of this because whatever God is doing, he needed a global disruption and he is tearing things down so that he can rebuild it with a brand new foundation. See, sometimes you got to tear things down in order to build it back up. And God says, some of you have been living in fear and anxiety for far too long and he's tearing down the systems and mentalities and powers that have had you in a perpetual state of unease. God says that he is tilting the scales of justice towards those who thought they were getting away with murder. God says that he's sending a spirit of recompense and reconciliation, a spirit of reparations and revelation. God is going to restore the balance in the land. And he's using viruses and violence to set up a new thing and get all of the glory. The Lord says, these things you think you see has only just begun. Before he can usher in a new heaven and a new earth, he must first tear down the old one. I don't know who this is for, but God says that you are valuable. And the enemy is aware of it. God says that the spirit of fear that the enemy is trying to infect you with is not going to work this time. God says it is time for you to be bold, to be courageous, and to walk in your authority as a son or daughter of the king. God says that you are to use your voice because your voice is anointed by his voice and his voice needs to be heard. God says that his word is still true, that he gave us all a hope and a future, that we all have a purpose and that no man, woman, or system will stop you from becoming what he created you to be. That is the word of the Lord concerning this. And so while people are seizing this opportunity to get limelight, to cause havoc, chaos, and pain, and while others are feeling pain, God is getting ready to use this as an opportunity to tilt the scales to tilt the scales and change the game. Hey, listen, man, this is Reverend Kelly. God bless you. Please, please, please pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Please support me by sharing this video. Please, I really, really do um, appreciate everybody who share my videos, comment and stuff. It means a lot to a little old guy from a small town like me. Hey, listen, God bless you, man. I'm praying for you. Let's stick together. Let's get on the front lines, but let's show the world what the church was created to be.
The Bible says that the church is supposed to be the light of the world. We are supposed to shine in, bright, in darkness. But they also said that we should be the salt. And what is salt? They didn't have refrigerators back then. All they had was salt. They would pack the fish with salt so it wouldn't spoil. God says that we are supposed to be preservatives. Preservatives in this earth. Preserving God's wrath from others. And preserving God's people and others. It's Reverend Kelly. Get at me. Email me. Book Rev Kelly. Buy the book. Go to the website revolkelly.com. Get at me. Let's talk. Let's work together. Let's go up. I am George Floyd. We need to stop all the riots. But how can you tell your people to stay calm and not start violence? How can you tell them to be chill and just stay quiet? Your people. Meaning everyone that's willing to stand up. Everyone who's had enough. All the families that's tired of being tough. More funerals and graduations. Less caps and gowns. More back seats and cuffs. Maybe it's just me, but I don't understand. A young man gets 23 years for killing a dog and a cop walked free for killing a young man. It's not right. It's not black and white. I want y'all to see. It's a man walking free after killing a teen. It's murder. Or maybe I'm just old school because I heard taking out a gun and shooting it is never right. I heard killing a man gives you 25 years to life, but it seems like the system forgot when it comes to one of their own. The police can kill innocent people and expect us to be okay and just go home. And at first, I was going to tell people to stop, but I realized, how can I tell them to stop when innocent people keep getting killed by cops? And when you see a uniform, you get scared. Hands up, don't shoot, but they still don't care. And a parent's worst fear is seeing their child gunned down. Hands up, don't shoot. We do this for Mike Brown. They want to gun me down like a Mike Brown. Same father, uh. They wanna gun me down like a Mike Brown. Leave me on the ground like a Mike Brown. Put it in my head, not the like Brown. I'm Mike Brown. They wanna gun me down like a Mike Brown. Leave me on the ground like a Mike Brown. Put it in my head, not the like Brown. I'm Mike Brown. The church hurt rapping, cause the church house trapping. That's why I'm back rapping, about to tell y'all. 